Hey Sonia, hey guys. So, what is your favourite Spider-Man animated series? Tough question. Mm. I think to answer this properly, we need to swing back to 1967, where it all began. The first animated series was simply titled Spider-Man and ran from 1967 to 1970. After Gantry Lawrence Animation went bankrupt and Ralph Bakshi took over, the show suffered from an extremely low budget. But it did give us the best theme song of all the animated series. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. I love the big, bold, brassy music from back then. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's great. The uh, voice acting, though, was a little bit rough. Yeah, bolder than bold. <laughs> but if absurdity and poor continuity is your thing, you should check this out because you're going to get a bit of a laugh. Totally. Uh, the next one worth mentioning is Spider-Woman. Yes. She's still in the Spider-Man canon. It only lasted for one season of 16 eps between 1979 to 1980. She was smart, sassy, tough as nails, and also saves Spider-Man in the Pyramids of Terror episode. And the series also features more of that big band music that you like yep. as well. <laughs> I liked her spinning transformation from Jessica Drew to Spider-Woman. It seemed more believable than the time it would take to suit up or strip off the civilian wear. I quite like that series and I do recommend it, it's worth a look. Okay. Spidey then returned in 1981, just titled Spider-Man. This was when Marvel endeavoured to bring more of their comic characters to our television screens and enter Ted Schwartz as the voice of Spider-Man. He, for me, was the first to kind of sound true to that character. He had that charismatic charm and that teenage tomfoolery going yeah, for him. Yeah, but it wasn't as popular as Spider-Man and his amazing friends. No. This saw Spidey team up with college friends Bobby Drake, aka Iceman, and Angelica Jones, aka Firestar, who, incidentally, was created specifically for this animation. Later, the series did integrate many of the other characters from the X-Men. Fast forward to 1994, and another Spidey series is born to accompany the X-Men series on the Fox Network. Another great Spidey voice, Chris Barnes, the tempo and animation and action took a big leap with this series. And so too, the dialogue, thankfully. Yeah. We no longer linger on frames with nothing happening within them or long panning shots of cityscape or open roads. Instead, the story moves at a greater pace as the integration of cinematic storytelling enters the world of animation. Yeah, there's also a constant inner monologue coming from Spidey, which mm. kind of helps to create tension or comic relief. Yes. And it gives you a really interesting psychological insight into the character, which is really important, yeah, I think. Yeah, absolutely. On to Spider-Man Unlimited. In 1999, Fox developed an expanded universe to that of the 1994 series, in which Spider-Man is transported to a counter-Earth. This series was cancelled after one season. For me, the colours were so bold it pushed me away from any kind of reality to this world. And the voice acting was below par, and the action as well was very stiff and stilted. The animation and the characters were just plain ridiculous at times. Uh, the web slinging as well and, and the physics of this world, it, it, it was off the mark as well. The following 2003 series had about as much success. Yep. I mean, it came off the back of Sam Raimi's 2002 Spider-Man yep. and it featured CGI rendered in cell shading. Spidey was voiced by Neil Patrick Harris, who I must admit I quite enjoyed. I thought he did a good Spidey. Really? Hmm. I didn't think so. No? Look, no, I think he's got great delivery, mm -hmm. good timing, uh, he's, he's very talented, yeah. but I just thought that he brought a maturity to that that uh, didn't really suit Spidey. However, they were pushing their limits animation-wise with this one. Some excellent storyboarding and dynamic action are plenty, but I felt disconnected. There was something cold about the world and the characters. I marveled at their technological achievement, but the animation lacked a, a sense of gravity. The 2008 Spectacular Spider-Man was an amalgamation of The Amazing Spider-Man and Brian Michael Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man. This series starts to reflect Marvel's ultimate line, mm. adding more diversity. Yeah, and the first season follows several storylines that are familiar to avid Spider-Man readers. Mm -hmm. Plus, it also features a teenage, for the first time, the a, first a time. teenage Spidey, as opposed to all those that preceded it. And this sort of combination breathed new life into our animated hero. Plus, many of the stories were lifted directly from the comics. 
Some of the animation isn't as smooth, and Spidey's web slinging defies gravity at some points, but if you can forgive some of these aesthetic flaws, you'll find a really great balance of story and action for comic readers and newcomers. The series ended on a bit of a cliffhanger though, because the contract between Sony and Marvel ended. Disney felt that much of the content was a little too heavy for yes. its younger audiences. Yeah, but this in turn gave birth to Ultimate Spider-Man in 2012. Yes. Based on the comics by the same name and voiced by Drake Bell, the series is going into its third season. The series depicts Spider-Man becoming the newest member of S.H.I.E.L.D. under the leadership of Nick Fury, on the team with Nova, White Tiger, Iron Fist and Power Man. This has to be the slickest animation to date. It features excellent action sequences, freezing frames like panels in a comic, and various onomatopoeic words that smash onto the screen. I generally like the character and landscape design as well. They also play with camera focus a lot, bringing another visceral level to the action. Not all the voice acting is on form though, and it is very much for younger audiences, I think. I yeah. mean, Spidey has a quip or a comic remark like every 10 seconds. Yeah, it gets pretty tiresome. Yeah. And some of the action as well uh, has various hoots, horns, and whistles associated <laughs> with the impact sounds, and it doesn't sell it too well. Luckily, that's kind of suppressed as the series goes on. Plus, fans haven't been too uh, keen on Spidey breaking the fourth wall, which yeah. is another sort of new addition. Yeah. So, there you have it. That's our rundown of various Spidey animated tunes for you to check out <laughs> if you like. Uh, Marvel are going to be bringing out yet another series mm -hmm. in the future. Also, a Guardians of the Galaxy cartoon, which isn't Spidey related, but it's, it's still cool. Marvel and it's cool. And yeah, you should keep an eye out for that one. <laughs> but, Sonia, what, what do you think? Which are your picks over all My these series? My picks would be Spectacular Spider-Man for comic buffs mm -hmm. and Spider-Woman for some good old flashback goodness. Yep. Plus, my little guilty pleasure is Spider-Man and his amazing friends because it's just too kitschy to ignore. Okay. Right? <laughs> uh, Ultimate Spider-Man for some awesome, awesome action yep. and animation. Uh, I do like Spectacular Spider-Man, but my heart kind of belongs to the 1994 Spider-Man. <laughs> so, yeah, let us know what you think if you have your favourite out there. Yeah. Now, where were we? Uh, Spins the web, web, any size, size catches these, these, just, just like flies. Look, look out, out, look out, look out, look out, look out, look Spider-Man. Ow! You okay, Al? Web shooter didn't go off. <sighs> There's a lot of blood.